Hi guys! I'm so happy to see you again at our Easy Calm English Golf lesson. Welcome home! So today we will talk with you about Modals are also called modal verbs, modal auxiliary verbs, and modal auxiliaries. And they are special verbs which behave irregularly in English language. That is why we have to know how to use them and we have to know their meaning very, very well. So, guys, Let's get started. Let's start talking about modal verbs. The first thing that I want to tell you is that modal verbs are absolutely different from verbs like like, go, swim, study, sit. Why? I will tell you. They modal verbs give additional information about the function of the main verb that follows it. They have a great variety of communicative functions. What they are. The first characteristic of modal verbs is they never change their form. You cannot add ending s, ed, or in to the modal verb. For example, if we take a sentence, he may come tomorrow, we see that this sentence is used with the future meaning, yes? We have the word like tomorrow. So that means that this action is going to happen in the future. But we do not have that will that shows that it is a future tense because Modals do not use future tenses, continuous tenses, and perfect tenses. Try to remember. The second characteristic of modal verbs is they are always used with an infinitive without particle to. Just try to remember. Let us look at the sentence. She can dance. She can dance. We do not use particle to before dance. We just skip it, omit it. Now particle to when we use modals. Now particle to of the main verb of this sentence. The main verb of this sentence is to dance. Yeah, but we have an infinitive, can. That is why to is omitted and we have only dance. The third thing is modals are used to indicate modality, allow speakers to express certainty, possibility, willingness, obligation, and necessity. So let's come closer to those modal verbs. Here you can see the list of modal verbs. And I think it is much easier to remember them in pairs like can, could, may, might, shall, should, will, would. And we have only one modal verb like must. It doesn't have a pair. It's lonely. So just try to remember these modals in pairs and again. Let us repeat them one more time, okay? Can, could, may, might, shall, should, will, would, must. These are modal verbs that are most commonly used in the English language. But there are another words that sometimes we can also treat like modal verbs, and they are dare, ought to, had better, 
and need not. Let's repeat them one more time to remember better. Okay? Okay. There ought to had better need not. We can also put them to the list of modal verbs, but I'm not always. Okay, let's go on. And now, uh, let us see what these modal verbs are used to express. So, modal verbs are used to express. The first, permission. The second, ability. The third, obligation. The fourth, prohibition. The fifth, lack of necessity. The sixth, advice. The seventh, possibility. The eighth, probability. Let us count them one more time just to remember better, okay? Okay, so from the very beginning. Permission. Ability, obligation, prohibition, lack of necessity, advice, possibility, and probability. So, these were characteristics and usage of modal verb. And, of course, the modal verbs by themselves, guys. Now we know many modal verbs. And if to be more exactly one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, nine modal verbs that are most commonly used. And the first, some others that are not so often used, but you have to know them. Uh, how to make a negative modal verb. And then another idea comes to my mind. How all negative verbs are made. Guys, do you know what do we use to make a negative form of any statement? Yeah, exactly. We use particle not. It always helps and it always saves. So, for example, um, if we want to say, you should mm -hmm, go there. This must be modal verb with a negative meaning. So how to say this? You should take that knot, put it after the modal verb, and you will have a modal verb with a negative meaning. Like, you should not go there. You see, should is a modal verb. Not, no. Don't go there. Yeah. So that's very easy. Again, one more time. If you want to make a negative modal verb, just take particle not, put it after the modal verb, and you will have negative modal verb. A modal verb with a negative meaning. You shouldn't go there. Now, just stay at home when it is raining, like today. Let's go on. Another question that arises in my head. How to make questions with modal verbs? Maybe you know. How do we make questions? Hmm? Sometimes we use special words. Yes, like what, when, where, and so on and so on. Sometimes we take an auxiliary verb like do or to be and put it at the beginning of our question. If we want to make a negative question, that includes a modal verb. What should we do? We just have to take this modal verb, put it at the very beginning of our sentence, and add all the components without changes. For example, um, if we have a statement, I may go there. It means 50-50. I may go there and I may not. And if we want to make a question, how to ask a question? Again, take what? Right. Take a modal verb. In this case, what modal verb do we have? Find it. May. May is a modal verb. 
and to make a question, we take it may put it at the beginning of our sentence and we have may I go there? May I go there? It's a question with a modal verb. Yes. So I hope that you have understood how to make questions, right? Just take a modal verb, put it at the beginning of the sentence and leave all the components without changes. May I go there? Right, guys, that was perfect. Another thing that is also very important is that um, all modal verbs, especially modal verbs with particle not, have contractions. What a contraction is? Contraction is a shorter variant. Yep, that's easy. So, let us look at all the contractions. And why do we have to know them before? Because in colloquial speech, in everyday speech, it is more commonly to use contractions than to say all these difficult and long words and long phrases and long sentences. So guys, let us look at all the contractions of the modal verbs with negative particle not. Okay. And I want to ask you, just uh, try to repeat after me, okay? It will be much easier for you to remember all these rules and all these contractions. So I would kindly ask you, please guys, repeat after me, okay? I hope we will do a great job. So the first one is can not. That is contracted to can't. Can't pray. The second is could not. That is contracted to couldn't. Couldn't. Perfect. May not. Mayn't. Mayn't. Great. Might not. Might. Might. Great job, guys. Must not. Mustn't. Mustn't. Perfect. Shall not. Shan't. Shan't. Great. Will not. Won't. Won't. Let's do it one more time, okay? Won't. Perfect, guys. Should not. Shouldn't. Shouldn't. Great. Would not. Wouldn't. Wouldn't. Perfect. Ought not. Oughtn't. Oughtn't. Bellissimo. And the last one. Need not. Needn't. Needn't. Great, guys. Now I hope that you have understood all these contractions and I hope that I have explained how to pronounce them. So we did a great job, guys. Perfect. That was great. So, guys, thank you so much for participation in today's lesson. I'm so grateful to you, really. So, and I was so happy, so happy to see you at our Easy Come English Go lesson. And see you next time. Don't forget to push the thumb up, subscribe, and to share this video. I wish you to have a great day. See you later and...